I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Haman Chamberlain. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. Hey, thanks for asking. It's a great pleasure to connect with you, Haman. It's nice to meet you too. So what part of the world are you in right now? I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, sweet, sweet. And which of your talents, I mean, I'm definitely seeing you with an instrument here, but which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? I think it might be my podcasting. Oh, yes, it is. Tell me about your podcast, please. So I started podcasting back in 2013, and the show I've been doing consistently is called Beyond the Playlist with Jay Hammond C. I interview uh, creative people who do creative things for a living. And then I recently started, about a year and a half ago, I started a show called Soundography, which is a crash course in music one band at a time. And then uh, two months ago, I started a show called Climb Out Sobriety, and it's about helping people live uh, and maintain sobriety after treatment. Hmm. So, so important. Well, you've definitely dived into podcasting, haven't you? I, I did. <laughs> I jumped all in. And I've even put a couple shows to sleep already. So wow. I've been at this. I feel like I've kind of done it all. Wow. So who did you learn these skills from to even, well, there's one thing with the podcasting skill, but even the the, the topics you're, you're, you're expanding on, that is intriguing in itself. Are you listening to a lot of, a ton of podcasts as well? I listen to a fair amount, but my career field has led me down the kind of a dual path. I've done a lot of creative things. I've worked in theater. I played in bands. I've done some writing. I've done, you know, all kinds of different things. And at the same time, I've been working in and around corrections and tre uh, treatment and rehabilitation places with both kids and adults. So mm. it's kind of led me down this dual road kind of. Yeah, it's intriguing. I think probably as a musician, you can pull this off so beautifully. Do you play the drums? No, I actually, I play harmonica and this thing called the Chapman stick. Yeah, yeah. Both at the same time? Do you do that? No. Both? Okay. No. I, played I, have harmonica, a... I played a harmonica in college professionally and I picked up the Chapman stick about seven years ago. Explain the Chapman stick to us, please. It's a 10 to 12 string tap style instrument. It's like wearing a giant guitar fret or guitar neck on your body. And when you want to play a note, you just point to it with your finger and it plays. You don't strum, you just tap on it. So it's kind of like a, a guitar and a piano had a baby. It's huge. Like, uh, it looks like an instrument that is like a guitar. The name is slipping me now. It's a, there's a guy from Trinidad that plays it originally. And like in, a sitar? Ah, uh, there we go, a sitar. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks something like a sitar, doesn't it? A, a little bit, yes. Yeah, but that is intriguing. So how can I, how can I see or, or hear you playing this? You probably wouldn't want to hear me playing it, but there are lots of people on YouTube who are far better than I am. You, <laughs> can, you, you can definitely get a good feel for Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, where's the best place for people to connect with um, the host of podcasts that you do host? Uh, if you go to jhammondc.com, you'll be able to uh, pretty much get in touch with everything I do. And uh, you can um, also go to climboutnetwork.com for the, the shows about sobriety. All right, all right. How and why will you continue to repeat the skills of putting out the content you are putting out? Oh, because, uh, well, one, Climb Out Network is kind of my, my job now. Um, that's kind of where all my, my, in, my interest is right now is trying to get that thing to take off and be helpful. But the other thing is I really just enjoy talking to people. I, I think that the ability to have a conversation with a live person is a skill that's kind of fading away and to be able to do it wherever you are in the world with people who have similar interests or who have something you find interesting is something that I feel like needs to continue happening. Hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you, my friend. I totally agree with you. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. Uh, probably try to learn how to play that Chapman stick. <laughs> so how does that make you feel? Isn't it frustrating starting off? It can be, but the thing is, is I didn't, it's not part of my career. It's not something I'm doing for work. It's something I'm strictly doing for fun. So therefore I find it to be a mental exercise, kind of like doing a crossword puzzle or doing a Stoku puzzle. Yeah. It's one of that. It's, it's a mental exercise to kind of help my brain stay healthy. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, so is it challenging to make sure 
you have fun. It can be challenging. I've, I've worked in some very stressful environments as far as my careers go. So the ability to play in bands or to do podcasting or to hang out with my kids um, is something I kind of put a priority on because I need to be able to have that balance. And fun definitely balances out a lot of the things I do for work. Why would you suggest to someone out there that's listening that is definitely caught up in the work uh, or the work world, why they should even consider doing what you're doing, even if it's not music, even if it's just something else that's fun? Because having a balance between work and life is so important for your own well-being because you won't be working forever. And if the only thing you identify yourself with is what you do for a living, when you're no longer doing that for whatever reason, you're going to be lost. Hmm. I was talking to uh, a guy this morning and he was telling me that he spoke to the heads of his department uh, who were previously there and he asked them, hey, if you needed to tell your younger self something, what would you tell them? And he said that, he said, um, you know, he sacrificed his family life and now he regrets it. And I'm guess it, guessing it, it speaks along to what you are doing by being intentional with your family from now. Yeah, Yeah, it is. I've worked two jobs for about 10 years. I was working anywhere from 65 to 85 hours a week. And I missed some pretty important time. But the reason I did it was so that my wife could stay home because that's what we did. And although it worked out that she could stay home, I did feel like I was only working and I missed out on some pretty cool things. And now I'm in a position where I don't have to. And I really appreciate the fact that I'm able to spend my mornings before everyone wakes up mm-hmm. doing the things I need to do. And then once everyone wakes up, I'm good. I can I can hang out with them and be single-mindedly focused on their needs and what they want to do. Love it. Well done. Well, amazing audience, we are live with Haman Chamberlain. Ooh, if I were to go through the podcast that he has done, oh my gosh. So there's Beyond the Playlist with J. Haman C, right? Um, ticka, 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 ticka. There is Booth at the End podcast, right? Uh-huh, yeah. And then there is Songography. Song, songography. Soundography, yeah. Soundography, right? And uh, did I miss one? I missed one, didn't well, I? I did. I did Grumpy Cast for a short time, like right. almost two years. And then I just started Climb Out Sobriety in September. Wonderful. Well, my friend, I, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Amon, what is your earliest childhood memory? I have a very vivid memory of being in my grandparents' driveway when I was probably... Uh, I would say sub five, but I can't give you a a perfect idea on that. But I was standing in their driveway and they had a bunch of old bricks. And I remember building towers with these bricks. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a a black Labrador named Daniel that was my best friend at the time. And the two of us would spend hours and hours and hours in in, in that yard and in that driveway playing with those bricks. And I'm not even sure why I was so fascinated about them or with them, but I really, really enjoyed building with those, those bricks. So why do you think this memory sticks out so clear? I, well, one, it was, I felt like I was on my own. I think that independence had something to do with it. And it was a strength thing because those bricks weren't light. They were actual full size, you know, house building bricks. And I think the other thing was, is it was one of the first times where I was actually able to have uh, a photographic, like people were taking pictures of what I was doing. And so I have this photograph of me doing it and I remember that I was able to show accomplishment of something I had done and it was something I had done on my own and I remember that feeling of pride building this tower that was basically taller than taller than I was and it was uh it was kind of a big deal for me yeah that's great well can I offer or add if you would um to the interpretation uh to the thought picture that you created in my mind Sure, go ahead. I love the idea of the companionship that exists and uh, in the picture because, um, hey, dog is man's best friend, if you would, right? And he, it's a he, right? Uh-huh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel. So Daniel is right there next to you and um, just offering that companionship, obviously, because 
you are a great friend, right? I'm guessing here, yeah, but I'm guessing you're a great friend. And it's really fascinating to see that when you show up in the workplace, how you've been able to achieve um, that tower, if you would, with your family life. Again, it took the sacrifice of time with you needing to be there, but it is intriguing that it was necessary to build it first so that you would be able to enjoy it. Wow, that's really good. I never put it that way. Yeah. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Uh, let's see. That would have been, uh, it would have been School's Out by Alice Cooper. All right. All right. Love it. Love it. Big tune. <laughs> all right. So, my friend, we have arrived at our destination now. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So, it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Um, we're going to go pretty quickly here. How much have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Um, my oldest daughter has, has already done a show for about a year. And it was called the Between Us Podcast. And she really enjoyed doing it and I hope that she does it again but she did it for about a year she's picking up a lot of the the things I like doing as far as music and watching movies and kind of digging into storytelling so I think that my daughters are the people I've chosen to pass this stuff along to because they're the ones who I'm kind of setting the example for Hmm. so are you married yeah you said that your wife right um stayed at home and did the hard work while you were having fun at work right yes I'm, yes i'm joking do you are, so you do do you believe in god i do now how many daughters do you have my apologies just two okay i have two daughters All one's right. 12 and one's eight wonderful do you have an inner circle of friends i do i have a, a very tight I, I don't have very many friends i'm an only child and so that idea of having one or two very very close people in my life is a little easier for me to deal with than having a lot of people who kind of know a little bit of things. Yeah. So I do have an inner circle. It's just, it's very, very small and very tight. Now, do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? I, uh, not every day. There are some days where I get some time to watch TV, but most days I'm too busy either editing shows or out doing things, you know, for work or whatever. All right. And what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Well, it most days it's more because of work because that's where I do the editing. That's where I do the posting. That's where I do the scheduling. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about after 1,001 conversations in three months in 2016, I came up with this workbook, the name of it being called Yours. I'm very proud of this workbook um, just because of the responses that I've gotten. The idea being you go through self-discovery um, to find your own unique real statement, your mission, if you would. Uh, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents you, Harmon Chamberlain, what would you say that is? Uh, I'm going to say this only because it's what I tell everybody that I've ever run across. And that's to remember who you are and what you stand for. Hmm. Love it. Haman, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I got to be honest. This was really cool. I love this concept. I, I wish that this is a show I wish I had come up with. Hey, hey, you could definitely do it still. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely still there. Haman, again, this was a great pleasure. Thank you for your comment, my friend. And thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.